All right. What is up, everyone? I'm Crystal Chats, and this is The Healthy Gossip. And we are in the comedy pop-up here in Koreatown, the most glamorous part of L.A. And I'm in the studio. I have my dear Alex Khan. What's up? Probably my, again, it's been official, official co-host, honor yeah. producer, um, and today, ladies and gentlemen, I have goosebumps already because I'm just so honored to have my gorgeous guest today. Um, may I call you Dr. Jen Park? You may. Yes, oh. doctor. <laughs> um, so Jen is one of my very, very closest, one of my close, most close, one of my closest uh, and best friends in Los Angeles. And I I could go ahead and say that you probably, you and maybe Hannah know like the most about me. The most, uh, yes. if, Out of anyone <laughs> in Los Angeles. And Hannah doesn't listen to my podcast, so I'll even go ahead and say you know more than her at this point. Um, well, like more of the juicy stuff because I have a feeling she's going to hear me say that. But you know what? That's just how it goes. So... <laughs> It's going to, like, everything that I talk about, like, is going to, there's, I, I can't hide anything from this girl. And I know everything about, mostly everything about you, just the it's same. Yeah. We're our non-judgy friends, so this should be really exciting. Um, now, doctor, um, now let me say she is a PhD, not an MD, not to get that twisted. Um, Big difference. Huge difference. Yeah. Uh, so... How does it feel being one of the most intelligent people on the planet? I don't know if I would say I'm one of the most intelligent people on the planet. Yeah, well, you are. <laughs> You're like top what one percent, like, um, like like point zero zero point point one four actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so then, why wouldn't you say that? Humble. Uh, and being humble. Yes. Okay. Um. It's a it's a lot of pressure. Is it annoying? Oh yeah. In in dating, it's annoying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And what is your official relationship status? Taken. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. For the first time in years, I can finally say I'm in a healthy relationship. Hmm. Healthy relationship for the healthy gossip. I love <laughs> it. Um. Congratulations. Yes. Um, so, uh, before we get into a little bit more on that, cause obviously I have questions, um, about your relationship. So, um, you've, and the reason why I said that, so cut, let, allow me to go on record and say you, uh, have said, quote, medical school is easy. <laughs> is that, is that an accurate <laughs> quote, Dr. Uh, Jen? I think compared to, uh, going for your doctorate, uh, medical school does have some parts of it that are a little bit easier yeah okay I would agree yeah humble guys uh <laughs> that yeah I, I just I remember whenever she said that you know she didn't really know her audience uh <laughs> coming from someone who is yet to get her associate's degree um but you know that just goes to say she is humble because she's friends with someone like me did you drop out um, well, I had I, I keep trying to go back and then dropping out, like or just not. I'll take a semester off and just never re-register, <laughs> or I'll move, and then it'll take me a year to get going again. So yeah, I've dropped out several times, uh, and and I was just and the reason why uh, you had, you had asked me why I was going to bring up college is I had went back to school at a later age, um, like oh, was just a couple years ago, and of course. Even at, because usually when adults go back to school, it should be easier and more challenging. You know, obviously if they, if they're an adult who doesn't have a lot going on, like maybe like for example, myself, I had no kids and I wasn't working. It should be really easy if I have my priorities straight. And of course it wasn't easy. And I would always call Jen and be like, so like, well, you know, help me. And then she would just basically be like, well, your time management, Crystal, <laughs> you know, um, I've noticed like how much time we're spending on social media without even saying that, but she would, she'd call me out. And so, but you had told me that your skill set happened from being a child. Like you've kind of known since you were little what you were going to do. Yeah. I would say I was about 
14 when I decided I wanted to be a scientist. Okay. Um, and a lot of, I think, the characteristics I had as a kid, very curious, very exploratory. I loved math. Um, it kind of led me towards a career in science. So were you, like, were you tiger parents, Asian parents, or were you like, no, I'm... I'm obsessed with school, or was it a combination of both, or even neither one? Oh, combination. I okay. mean, I play. I played piano for you know 15 years. And okay. Did taekwondo and did all the normal like activities that you do when you have a tiger parent. Mm. Got tested on multiplication tables when mm. I was like five. Wow. Um, but I also did really enjoy school. Embarrassingly enough. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> because sometimes like I I'm careful to ask questions like. It's hard, it's hard for you to give someone advice to someone who's not naturally good in school, right? Because it's, it's, you don't really have, like, I'm not naturally good in school. I probably could have been if I'm, I'm, I had a better childhood. <laughs> uh, or if I had real tiger parents. I'm like, dang, mom, like, could you have at least got me a tutor? Um, but, yeah, I, I, I thought that was so bizarre, like, growing up, that my parents didn't really understand how bad I was struggling in school because they had their own stuff going on. So I, I know that had a lot to do with it. So I got really good at just being like, yeah, my homework's finished when I was like clearly getting D's and F's. Like my dad would find my bad grades and be like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, it's my bad grade because I don't do homework. Um, so because I, I usually when I have, like if I talk to somebody who's really intelligent, I, I try to find like, what do they do that's different? And I'm, I'm starting to realize in my later age, like a lot of it, it's just... You're molded into this. I mean, natural curiosity. I read a lot, and I was lucky because I had um, I had a tiger mom, but mm -hmm. she she didn't push me into medicine or engineering or anything in particular. She mm -hmm. really emphasized education, but she didn't uh, force me to do something that I didn't like. So she didn't want me to find my passion. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Levels. There's levels to this tiger parent thing. Yeah. Um. And see, my poor mother was like, she would have just died if I could have done either one, like even have been a nurse, you know, and she just didn't really have the tools to like guide me properly. So now I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and then, so where did you go to school? For college? Yeah. Well, I started school in Boston. So I was at Northeastern University and then um, realized I hated the East Coast and I hate cold weather. As someone from San Diego who has never lived in a place with seasons, it was a tough adjustment. I mm -hmm. uh, transferred to UC Santa Barbara, uh, finished up there, and then eventually moved to L.A. for grad school. You know, I forgot that, the UC Santa Barbara part. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> really? I totally forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. How was that? How was Santa Barbara? Gorgeous. Beautiful. Okay. Um, I mean, by the time I got to UCSB, I was a junior Okay. college and I partied a little bit but at that point I was very focused about getting into grad school so a lot of classes a lot of labs and um, a lot of undergraduate research oh. have you done any shows in Santa Barbara Alex I have not no I know I keep I always see people <clears throat> go heading out uh, up there I'd like to have some family up there I hear I mean yeah. I hear really good things about it yeah. seems like a fun spot and then, yeah, then you went to gorgeous Santa Barbara to USC. I'm like, fun. So that's how Jen and I met. We were neighbors, and she decided um, she had met my ex-boyfriend a couple of times, and then she met me, and she decided that we were going to be friends. Yeah, we were both walking our dogs. Yeah. Yep, both uh, trapped in our relationships. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we were. That's what really bonded us. Mm-hmm, uh, yeah, and then and now she's in a healthy relationship, and I'm dating. <clears throat> Well, it, it's mm -hmm. taken a <laughs> yeah, but like, I, like eight years or something. <laughs> yeah, we've had a rough road. I mean, I'm still kind of on the rough road, obviously, if you've listened to any of this podcast. However, um, yeah, uh, we can. Uh, so before we um, move on to that, I was going to ask you. So real quick, did did this the psychology at all? push you to neuroscience or were you just literally it's just the, the structure of the brain that like I've never really been able to ask you those questions like when because obviously you're interested in psychology because most people who have even a little bit of a heart are but 
education wise is there any relation there um in a way absolutely okay. um i was really drawn to neuroscience because your brain is really what um creates your reality so everything from you know the things that you're scared of to things that you love to um you know everything you see sex. and hear sex I mean, pleasure pain um your brain creates all of it using electrical impulses and chemicals that it's throwing around so um that's what i was really interested in is how can you take this small organ and um essentially create your entire reality mm. So in a way, yes, psychology, of course, is tied into there because your emotions, um, like I said, your fears, um, okay. all of that is. Let's let's give you your pop quiz. Um, I was listening to this podcast <laughs> about a guy who a uh, part of his brain. I don't know what happened to it. I'm sure you can tell me started to go and um, it actually caused him uh, to start. Um, looking at child porn. So what, because like, basically, yeah. So what happened was, is I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it was something or a process that he had, had done or his brain started deteriorating or one part of his mind. But um, so apparently he played piano and then he started practicing like he's never practiced before. And then when he was making love to his wife, they were extra passionate. And like, I guess there was like this primal part of his mind that was being released and that caused him to like, it was almost like he, it was insatiable. Like he kept having to go more and more and more into that like primal part of his brain. And so whenever the f the feds came to get him or whatever, whoever it is that comes to get pedophiles, uh, he, it was literally like a medical condition. They were able to find out that a part of his brain was, again, do you know what I'm talking about? Because I want to find the podcast and I can't, I don't even know what to look up because Maybe I'll just start Googling random things. Googling pedophiles. Well, pedo pet like what part of your brain makes you a pedophile? <laughs> you got to, you got to, if you just Google pedophile podcast, it's not mine. Don't click on the first <laughs> one. Don't, don't click on the first one. <laughs> well, no, it was, I just thought it was, I, cause I, I actually listened to it because one of the last classes I took in community college was uh, a bio psych class. And I think, I don't know if it was amygdala or what. But I just thought it was really interesting because, you know, we really got to take care of our brains. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll look it up and then I'll follow up with you guys like next week or something. And uh, um, I just thought it was really fascinating because there is a point where um, I'm sure um, criminal psychologists have to like look into this because there's obviously something that's related to these people who, besides abuse, obviously. Did you guys see Joker? Yeah. Mm -mm. No, not yet. I heard good things. I cried like a bitch for 15 minutes, like after I'd already got home about, um, I won't even, I won't do spoilers. Like a mental illness thing or? Well, that yeah, that, that's the thing yeah. is like, there's so many different ways you could look at the movie and interpret it, but he was, um, severely abused. Um, and there's so much that goes into it, but like, that's when you start thinking like okay like well how much can someone endure before they snap you know um or uh like again or if it is a medical condition like if it's something that just gets gradually worse as they get older and then because that's what i can't remember about his i don't remember on the podcast and i i, I literally just thought of this right now because no, if i would have remembered this i probably would have obviously done my research so apologies okay <laughs> we'll do it and then we'll figure it out and then i'll send you the podcast okay. and then we'll listen to it and then i'll have you back on and you'll educate and enlighten us on how to take care of your brains so you don't become a pedophile um so what do <laughs> you do what what exactly do you do with the practice of of the brain what is your you say you're a scientist do you do you study or do you take patients what do you do um, I see no patients. My, my patients are only mice. Oh, so wow. No no humans. That's fun. Yeah. Um, it's always uncomfortable being on a plane and they ask for a doctor. Yeah. Like, ah, I can't help you unless uh, you're a mouse. Are you a mouse with brain I've trauma? Done, I've done CPR on a mouse. Can I? Oh, I've, I've tested <laughs> makeup on them. Can I help you? So <laughs> she worked for a long time on microscopes. Mm. Yeah. So um, in undergrad, or sorry, in graduate school, um, your my entire six and a half years was spent doing research, mm -hmm. um, trying to understand how the brain works, um, and then after I got defended my thesis at uh, almost thirty, 
yeah, I was in school until I was 30. Ooh. Um, I worked for a company that developed uh, imaging technologies for research. So okay, cool. imaging neural populations and how they communicate and how they encode in information. So I have a, my best friend has a joke and I want to run it by, I want to see what, what like, I, I just want to, I want, I want to know the, the truth behind this. He's got a great joke about how they test CTE medication uh, on mice. And he says that uh, that means that somebody's job is to just throw mice against a wall all day. Like someone's got to give all these mice concussions. You don't just stumble upon a handful of mice with concussions. What is the process? I need to know. Oh, does Peter listen to your podcast? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's different ways to. Um, that's a, that's a great question. To mimic Alex. brain trauma. Uh, the one I'm familiar with, is, I, which I've never done, um, is you actually drop a weight, like a mouse is restrained, and then there's a weight that's dropped on top of the brain. On top of the... On top of the head. Wow. Yeah, so that's kind of how... How big of a weight? I'm actually not sure. I've never done it, mm. so I know that that method exists. Are they hiring? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I've got a buddy who talks about it on Sage. I feel like he's very qualified. If you guys need help okay. injuring animals, just okay. give us a call. All right, all right, all right. Good to know. We'll so take you, his in, we'll take his info. All right, perfect. <laughs> uh, That's I mean, interesting. Big, big picture is it is a big problem, mm -hmm. and it is something that needs to be addressed. So glad that there's active research going on yeah i mean well and that's <laughs> the the end of his joke is if you want poor people to keep playing football you gotta you gotta concuss some mice but and that's like that's true i mean you definitely want to figure out how to fix the brain and you don't want to start with children with brain injuries so you start somewhere right yeah right. no yeah, i'm not i'm not i can't get those protocols approved or whatever i'm not reason. throwing mice at the wall or anything here i'm just you know just yeah. the ones you find yeah, in the just studio. The, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But no, um, no, sorry. That just, he always, when he tells that joke, I always think about like, yeah, what is that process? So how big is the weight? I, I, I honestly don't know. Oh, I think I just asked that. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I want to research this some more. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, like, it doesn't have to be much of a weight. You could do it with like glass. Just. I mean, yeah, but if you want to have fun, it could be a lot of weight, right? If you yeah, wanted you to. Don't wanna, you don't want to. Bloody like, mouth. Yeah. Actually you know, accidentally kill it. Or if it was like a hammer, just... I mean, but yeah, you if you think about it, a mouse trap isn't that much weight, and it'll just... And you want it to be controlled, repeatable, <laughs> you know. And it's always from the exact you know. inch off the table. No, exactly. Yeah, right. interesting. Yeah. There's a real art to hurting animals. Apparently. <laughs> it's all documented <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, that's, 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 I don't think that's kosher. <laughs> it's probably not kosher. I don't <laughs> think I don't think you can eat... You can't, did the Jews eat mice? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they do have their way of killing animals, right? Isn't yeah. that the thing? They can't suffer. Mm. The, isn't, that, isn't that what kosher is? Like, they have to have no, it blessed, like, and then they oh. have to kill it a certain way. I yeah, know. I believe you're right. I remember the rabbi part. Yeah. For it to be kosher. Yeah, rabbi's got to bless it, but I believe you're right. I think they have to kill it nicely. Is I don't like know. Halal meat? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good time. All right, guys. Couple halal guys over here. <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah, I've been born again vegan, well, a plant based. I hate saying vegan. I'm sorry, vegan people. I just like saying plant based because there's a huge chance that I, I'm just not. It's the same thing. Like, unfortunately, I, I'm just a really shitty person. Like with recycling, I know. It, like if there's not a recycling bin around, I'm not one of those people that are like, oh no, I just have to, I really want this to be recycled. And I watch all these things on Instagram. Like today I was seeing this, like, there's like these children who have all these crazy, I don't want to call them organizations, but I feel like they have organizations because they have like, oh, this is my recycling business. And I go through my neighbor's trash to make sure that they don't miss any recyclables. And I just feel like a piece of shit. Because I throw plastic. If my neighbor started going through my trash, I'm coming outside <laughs> with a firearm. Get out of here. Well, that was... Get out of my that, trash. That was my my joke, as um, why do people in Los Angeles have recycling bins when there's always going to be a homeless person to fetch it out for yeah, you? Yeah, he's going to do it for you anyway. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, so um, you're in a relationship, and oh, I know this is we'll amazing. See. It's only been five months, so we'll see. Well, I'm not get too excited. Yeah, right. No ring on the finger yet. I know. <laughs> That's what my mom always said. No ring, no matter. <laughs> yeah, go mommy. Um, and it clearly hasn't worked out well for me, mother. <laughs> There's a ring right there. You matter. You matter to somebody. Oh, that's right. Who put that ring on your middle finger? My mother. <laughs> Dude, you matter to somebody. Bro. M- mommy's girl. I know. Okay. Thanks, mommy. I mm. know a lot of, like, military guys who put a ring on it in five months, and those are never good relationships anyway, so I don't think you want a ring yet, right? Yeah, my, my current guy was like could i just tie a string on it and ask you and then we'll upgrade later (laughs) (laughs) and i said sure but it's not going to be a string that's not going to be the starter um what is what's the starter i know ring ring pop twill i know (laughs) that's what i said i was like bro i'm too old you're like it canvas please can you get a strip of canvas (laughs) twine at least yeah Sterling. Can yeah. we at least do Sterling, guys? <laughs> Can you Sterling melt down? with a CZ? Just melt down one of your spoons. Like, turn it into a ring. Exactly. Right? God, something that I can at least shower with. <laughs> should just go straight to the tattoo. Just get each other's initials tattooed on that ring finger. Mm. The look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, the only tattoo I have I've already regretted, so no thanks. Um, and... So what what are like what are some things that this relationship like how did you know it was going to be different because Jen and I like let, let's let, okay by starting off let's tell our listeners one of your worst dating stories just so they can get a POV of the bullshit that you and I have been through <laughs> over the past 10 years let's 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 set them up so then when you start talking about how amazing your new man is. I'll be like, oh, yes, finally. <laughs> so, yeah, what's what's one of the worst situations? Um, well, what do I you want to I think I have two that are tied for first. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so the first one, uh, dated a guy for a few months. We um, were exclusive. We planned a trip, an international trip to South Africa. Mm-hmm. We were going with his best friend, his best friend's girlfriend. Flights are booked. Hotels are booked. Safaris booked. We're pumped, um, get all of my shots. You need a ton of shots to go to South Africa. And um, a few weeks before the trip, he, out of the blue, says he wants a break. Just for like a week. And I said, well, that's weird. Because nothing, nothing spurred that. We didn't get in a fight. There was no argument. But, you know, I was like, okay, fine. I backed off. I gave him some time. And then uh, about a week goes by, and... We uh, meet up for a drink at a bar, and then he dumps me at the bar. And eventually, I wheedle out of him that while we were dating, he uh, met his soulmate at the grocery store. And that is why we went on a break, so that he could go on a few dates with her and see if he liked her. So I said, well, what about this trip? Like, everything's paid for, everything's booked. Like, what are we going to do? We're supposed to leave in two weeks. And he said, well, I don't think it's a good idea. If either one of us goes, uh, we should just cancel it. I, I, You know, whatever. Did you go by yourself? Well, that's what I said. I said, I'm just going to go alone because, I, you know, I already took the time off work. Like, I, 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 I want to go. I got yeah. the shots. They yeah. were expensive. Yeah, I bet. You know, like and Jen travels a lot by herself. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, I can do this alone. And he lost it and said, No, neither one of us are going. We're, you know, we're not Ew. going on this trip. Like, nah. you're not my daddy anymore. You're not Am my right? boyfriend. So you're uh, not my soulmate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no ring, no matter, bitch. No ring, no matter. I do what I want. Put some string on it, motherfucker. <laughs> you didn't put no string on it. <laughs> okay. So just, you know, to be respectful, I just said, fine, you know, fine, we won't go. Neither one of us is going. And uh, the day we're supposed to leave, I'm just scrolling through Facebook. And what do I see? He took her. He checks in for our flight. And I was like, that's weird. And um, I've got some pretty good investigative skills. Wait, but how 
stupid. Nah, you were Ever stalking. Now. You were stalking. How stupid. He wanted to be seen, though. If he's doing it oh, on no. social media, he wants he you to didn't? know. I texted him. Uh huh. And I said, hey, I thought neither one of us was going on this trip. So why are you checked in for our flight on Lufthansa? And then he blocked me. Uh, <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> no response. Uh, and then I found the girl's Instagram, and she was in South Africa on our trip at oh, our hotel. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's She'd um, already gotten the shots, too. She mm. Apparently, she got the shots, and she was ready to go. Cool. Are they still together? So, they are. They, um, they're apparently engaged. They're in Thailand right now. Well. Yeah, they're engaged. Hopefully, she so. didn't get the shots for <laughs> Thailand, and you know, they I come home sick. Kind of was like, you know what? fine maybe she was your soulmate and if that was the cost then that's that's fine you can go be happy you know it's cool mm-hmm. is is this pilates girl yeah okay yeah <laughs> i remember this okay i mean all right uh, yeah well <laughs> congratulations to you too um hopefully karma is not that much of a bitch i mean her favorite hashtag is what, once you go Greek, you can't walk for a week because he's Greek. Yeah, and, I'm like, and they like butt sex. Yeah, I'm sorry, but like, no, like not impressive. Oh, I thought it at was a, all. I thought it was a butt thing. Oh, oh, the no. Greeks like well, the Greeks well yeah, they like, like the it because door. they have small dicks and they it feels <laughs> better in the butt. Okay, small yeah. dicks feel better in the butt. It does for me. All right, cool. I've never had a big oh. one in my butt. Okay, I'm too scared. Yeah, why? Like, why? Why would I want that huge? <laughs> Me ass, too. When, when I can barely, if if I can barely handle you and my vag, there's no way you're ever gonna ask. O- only me little for dicks for my butt. That's what Sorry. I've been telling everybody. Yeah, exactly. Why there's a ruler next to my bed? So there's yeah. boyfriend <laughs> size dicks, and then there's butt we size. We learned dicks. this. I forgot. Yes. Yeah. Do you know what a boyfriend size dick is? No. It's like the it's like the third bowl of porridge. It's, oh, just just right. Right. it's just right. It's just right. It's not too <laughs> thick, but it's not too runny. It's just right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Not too soggy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so they're in Thailand right now. How long ago yeah. did this happen? Um, I think it's been about two years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can you that share? Th- stung a little bit. Can you share the second one? You had two uh, stories. The second one. Whew. I'm, I'm excited to know which one this is. <laughs> I think you know. I called you immediately. Of course <laughs> I know. But, like, that's why I'm, I'm curious to see which one you would actually want to share. So oh let's man. do it. I'm not embarrassed about it anymore. Just, just a little bit embarrassed. I uh, dated a guy, a lawyer. Yes. Partner. Yes. Partner. I love this one. I'm so happy you're sharing this. <laughs> <sighs> and uh, I, travel, I travel a ton for work, and he traveled a ton for work. We actually met at the gym. And... Um, you know, he asked me out, went out for a drink. What we gym? Started, uh, I don't want to say. It's small. Oh, it's in okay. Santa Monica. Okay. Yeah, Jen's a West Sider. Mm. Ooh, West Sider. Oh, that's right. All right. <laughs> um, and uh, we started hanging out, started dating. He was great. He was so sweet. He was from the Midwest. Mm. Um, really, really tricked me. Uh, so <laughs> Fucking tricksters. <laughs> Fucking lawyers, man. Uh, Kill them all. Never date a lawyer. Never date a lawyer or a cop. Never date a lawyer because I've only had bad experiences with lawyers. I, I've had a couple of good, like I, I've destroyed a few lawyers <laughs> in my day. So she's had some some boyfriend sized lawyer dick. <laughs> she knows what's up. Uh, so we date and um, this goes on for a few months, and uh, he's talking about marriage and he wants to have kids and whatever. So we're both traveling a lot and seeing each other when we're both home. But, you know, a lot of our relationship is, like, FaceTiming from hotel rooms and texts mm-hmm. and calls and whatever. What kind of lawyer yeah, was he? FaceTiming. Um, <laughs> what did he do? Yeah, he was at a pretty big firm. He does mostly tra- transactional law. Okay. There's a lot of contracts. Okay. Yeah, boring. Yeah. You travel for the contracts? Apparently. Okay. He was always on the road. So I think he had global clients. So he was mm. traveling a lot. Um, so anyways, um, probably about five, five months goes by of this, uh, convinces me to have a baby with him, wants to, you know, like wants to marry me ASAP. And I'm kind of like, okay, this guy's kind of great. He's nice. He's, you know, good looking. He's got a good job. Like, why not? So I'm all in. Green card. 
Huh? Green car? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. American. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Midwest. I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, Midwest. Yeah, that's Midwest. right. That's right. Yeah. From a small town. Um, Sorry, the suspense you know, is he killing had, me. He White guy. He had never been on a dating app before, so like he he hasn't been like destroyed yet by like the dating scene in L.A. Mm. Right, which is really valuable. Uh, so, Maybe. anyways, a um, few days goes by and I don't hear from him, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird, you know, and I'm wondering if something went wrong or something something happened. So I show up at his place um, unannounced, just you know checking in. And um, I find out that he's engaged. And I don't find out from him. I found out from the police officer that he called on me because he didn't want to open the front door because he was inside with his fiance. Yeah. <laughs> well. So he never had the courage to actually tell me to my face what happened. But yeah. Oh. Turns out this guy I dated for like five months was engaged the whole time. Yeah, or why don't you just, if you're going to finally start ghosting someone, break up with them. Yeah. Just be like, hey, it's not, or, or it will do what the last asshole did and say, you know, I met my soulmate. At the grocery store. At, and <laughs> I just proposed to her on the spot. I, I, I met my soulmate. Because I had a piece of string in my pocket. Before, <laughs> I met my soulmate before I met you. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm engaged to my soulmate. Would you like to go out later? But I thought. Maybe well, that's pretty intense. I could have two soulmates. Yeah. So where'd you meet the guy you're dating now? Um, on the street. On the street. Yep. Was he almost? <laughs> uh, no, we were walking our. Because that's popular in the West Side. <laughs> <laughs> that's very popular. Where in Santa Monica are you? Um, north of Wilshire. North of Wilshire. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah. She has a sick, sick location. Sick locale. All right. Yeah. Close to the beach. Nice. Yeah, nice. Very cool. Yeah. Are you down like uh like Wilshire at like seventeenth? Where, where like where? Oh, how no. far deep are you? No, you're like oh no, like fourth. Third. Third. All right. <laughs> Wilshire and the Promenade. I dig it. Yeah, yeah. I uh I'm down there a lot. I bark for a show on the Promenade, so oh, I'm gonna look out for you. Okay. All, all right. right, all right. Yeah. Oh, you'll see her. Oh, I like that Chipotle over near Wilshire. That's <laughs> Wilshire. It's like Wilshire, right? Yeah. I'm gonna see yeah, you. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a good. That's a good Chipotle. Have you ever been down there and someone harassed you about a comedy show and they were sitting on a stool? No. Oh, we're not doing good enough. All right. <laughs> and I'm there all the time, all so right. you guys are clearly slacking. No, we're usually down on Broadway, but we're going up to Wilshire now. Okay. We can find you. Okay. Okay. Very right. right, cool. Fair so enough. you met walking your dogs. Mm -hmm. All right. And? All good? Uh, so far. Right. I don't know. I'm, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. But have so you met his? So have good. you met his? Uh, have you met his wife yet, or have you met his, <laughs> his mom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm kind of waiting for like his wife and child to show up on the front door. Mm -hmm. That's like, actually. Why did you leave us behind? Yeah. Have you um, met his parents at all, like through FaceTime or anything? No. Wouldn't that be flattering though if someone left their family for you? That's pretty good. I mean, don't hide it from me, but you left a family for me. That's nice. Hmm. That's. You'd yeah. have to have a lot of money, <laughs> a lot of money. You'd have to have a an above average sized boyfriend dick. Wallet. Wallet. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Husband um, sized wallet, boyfriend sized dick. Yeah. There we go. That's, That's the right combination. Mm -hmm. You need you need a T-shirt that says that. <laughs> yes, I like it a lot. Um, um, okay, cool. And. Um, you know the the one the boyfriend I had when we met. You know I never met his parents one time or even like on the phone or FaceTime or anything. Didn't you date for like four years? Two years. Um, but yeah. And live together? Yeah. He lived with <laughs> me. Yeah. So how That's long weird. should you be with someone before you meet their parents? Like wh at what point are you like this is getting weird? Well, I think it's a case by case scenario. I think mm. if you're um, conservative, you know, obviously it's okay to take longer because mm -hmm. you know you probably have those parents that think well okay like if you guys are going to be sleeping together and dating exclusively then obviously maybe the next step would be marriage so then now um once you feel that way with that person then it's time to meet the parents you know what but if, what if you like being exclusive but you're not sure about marriage yet you introduce them to the parents or do you you kind of let it hold off well again if the person, to me, if you are conservative and you're dating and you're unsure, then there should be a time. Like, I don't know, three months, six mm. months, whatever makes you comfortable. But I think three months 
three to six uh, of being exclusive is fair, depending on just how, because, you know, some parents are psycho mm. and they're mean and some people hate their parents. So yeah. some people are just Sometimes trying. I'm doing you a favor. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so, but like someone who's like me, you know, I'll, I'll tell my mom, like if I'm dating somebody after like a couple of weeks, a week even, just like, yeah, I'm hanging out with this guy. He's taking me on a date. You mm. might hear his name again. You might not, you know. And my mom has just kind of embraced that. Like, and then my dad is the same way, but he's actually getting kind of, <laughs> like, he jokes about it. Is he's he concerned? Like, yeah, he's like, that's, it's not going to last. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, what happened? Yeah, uh-huh. I <laughs> he called it. Yeah. But my dad's also where I get my sense of humor from. Yeah. So it's, and he's usually not wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's, I get real sad though when he actually like likes one of them and he's like, oh man. And you're like, oh, that sucks because that's the one I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't brought a boy home in eight years. When I, uh, oh, wow. When I, uh, when my last relationship in Vegas, I was with a girl for about 10 months and uh, she, to work in like, I was supposed to leave the city and we kind of knew it was going to end at some point anyway. And, uh, around like me kind of stick it like the the move kind of fell apart and then she was like all right so where's your mom at and i was like yeah oh, no. but even my mom was like are we ever gonna meet this girl you've been telling about this girl forever and i was like mm, i don't i don't think this well, is the one for you to meet that, like that's different though because at least your mom knew yeah I, I was thoroughly convinced the whole two years she never even thought he had a girlfriend. And you guys live together? Mm -hmm. Wow. How do, you, how do you hide that? Is he Was he just not close with his folks? or? Uh, no, I, I think they're just, like, the worst kind of tiger parents mm. um, that, like... And if you guys don't know what tiger parents are, they're just these really extremely strict and rigid, like, Asian parents that want you to excel in math and science and do something with it. Um, and math and science is the only way. Oh, and you have to play an instrument. And you play an instrument, yeah. Or dance ballet or something like Mostly that. Mostly the instrument. Learn, yeah. co teach yourself you're, to you're code by the time you're 12. Your only options are like piano, flute, and and, and no boyfriend and or violin. girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Like that is a no-no. Yeah. And not until after college. Um, so I think that's the kind of parent he has because he definitely was probably sheltered because he even said that like when he was in I think even in high school he didn't really go out much and party or anything like that so I think he was always just at home uh you know getting those grades getting those grades doing his homework yeah and yeah watching some watching tv um so yeah hopefully um if you're in a relationship and uh someone's hiding you from their parents this gives you the strength to be like I think it's time for a FaceTime call. I'm I'm ready for them to know that I exist in this world and I exist in your world, in your universe. Stick up for yourself, guys. Yes. Because I'm I still have a grudge <laughs> against that guy for not. So, I have a my my current girlfriend, she met my parents after like 2 weeks because of my stroke. I had a stroke like 2 weeks after we started dating and the hospital room, you meet people. Um my dad is going to be in California at the end of the month. And he's like, hey, let's all, you know. And she's like, yeah, I want to meet him. I want to meet And I'm like, ooh. like, And it's not, she's met my mom. Like, I don't even, and my stepdad, it's not even that I don't want her to meet my parents. It's more that I don't, <laughs> I'm more hiding my life from them than I am hiding her what is from it? them. I just don't get along with. I've never gotten along with my father. I I don't I don't I don't jive well with my stepmom and like her the way she mm. rolls. And I just like I'm more like yeah I'm doing you a favor by not introducing you. Um, Do you mind telling us what the way she rolls means? Oh yeah, I mean um, like, yeah, she's just it? not a nice person. You know okay. like uh, like for here's here's a story I always use. Um, you know how people say like if someone's rude to a server, that's probably mm. who they really are. Yes, I have that problem. She's too. she's the epitome of rude to a server. Like uh, to the point where in my adult life, they make a lot of money. In my adult life, I walk back into like fancy Italian restaurants and hand a server more cash. I'm Aww. like, sorry, thanks for putting. You know, like I just you know, and uh, and that's just a lot of um, just very like. I'll get there when I get there. The party will start when I get there. There's no no idea of timeliness or other people's time. Um, I'm sure you've told your girlfriend that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's a lot of drama, and I told her, you know, also, which she had a similar experience with, like someone that her father used to be married to, which was like, uh, 
you know, oh yeah, I'm real cool. Yeah, no, we're cool, cool, cool. And then like once the once the you know the once the doors are closed, the cool person isn't the cool person. You know what I mean? Where it's mm-hmm. like you'll tell your friends like, God, it's fucking uh, like it's almost like you feel gaslit a little because you're like telling people in your circle like, fuck, this person is making my life hell. And then they meet that person, they're like, oh, seem nice to me. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so um, I've told her that, but that's kind of like. You know, so I, I, where I'm pointing with the other one is sometimes if they don't want you to meet their parents, maybe it's because they're more embarrassed of their parents than they are of you, you know? Right. But right. you should also maybe possibly know that. Well, I'm pretty sure yeah. at that point I was, like, working on a food truck mm-hmm. and uh, was hardly a, a comedian or an actress. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, this is my 25-year-old girlfriend who works on a food truck, you know? So it's like, it's if cool. That, if that matters, then... Because I know my mom doesn't want me to introduce her to my 25-year-old boyfriend who works on a food truck, so it's like... <laughs> How old was he at the time? Die. Uh, probably 28, you know, three years older. But he was also, like, really successful, and he could do math. <laughs> well, that's his, all that matters, right? In his head. And uh, she probably was like, "No, you need to find a girlfriend who can also do math." You need a <laughs> you need a girl who doesn't need a calculator to ring up the food truck orders. Exactly. Right. Yes. Well, yes. I've dated many a girl that work on food trucks, and I'm gonna say better. <laughs> Jen's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. <laughs> Jen's like, um, she's like, I throw mice against a wall. You better watch. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so when did you, so so now you, you've said it yourself, because so now you can admit that you're like so kind of just jaded that it's like even with your man now, you're kind of like, if it happens, it happens, and I'm not even going to be surprised at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you piece of shit men out there. like It's awful. It's okay, because there's women out there like me. Destroying those men, and you know that. Thank God, yeah. and you know, <laughs> she know I know. You know, that. two wrongs yeah. make a right. You know, it's funny because like lawyer. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's simple math, bro. It's, yeah, you got to get even. It's a zero <laughs> sum game. Yes. Zero sum game. Yes. Um. So, because uh, I've, I've, I, I know for a fact there's two lawyers out there that I've crushed where it Mm. was just like uh, well it's no which is really sad because those two guys are like so nice they're probably two of the like sweetest most kind uh but kind of law one of them one of them was like a little grumpy though like just a grumpy energy period but to me he was like super kind but yeah and he was really bitter about the kind of law that he did because it was like traffic law isn't that what you want though don't you want a guy who's kind of like like mm-hmm. opposed to, to a lot else. of the world, but it treats you spe- like right, that, like, which is why a, I was like sad. Have that we I, talked about this? I feel probably, like we, yeah. yeah, but yeah, no. Um, and then the other one, I don't know. I just know he uh, was um, able to practice in New York and California. And mm. then in the time that we were dating, he was like trying to pass the bar in New York. And then he was like, "Yeah, so sorry that you know my uh, taking the bar was like getting in the way of our courtship." When he said Ooh. the word courtship, I was like, oh, wow. You're like, what's my dowry? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you haven't introduced someone to your parents in eight years, you said. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, is that eight years of dating or eight years ago you did introduce someone to your parents? Eight years ago I da- I introduced somebody to my parents, the guy I was dating when we met. Mm-hmm. And uh, last, last guy I've introduced, mm-hmm. yeah. And I've had a so lot of... So do they ask? All the time. Okay. Uh, All the time. Do they know? Do you tell them when you're seeing someone, or do you just like, a, hey, I'm seeing this guy, but it's you're not nope. gonna meet him yet? No. Nope. No. Nope. I get asked all the time, and I'm just like, no. Nope. Do you think no boyfriend? Do they think you're gay? <laughs> I uh, I actually one year told them that I was because I got very very frustrated, uh-huh. um, and it kind of like shut my dad up really quickly. Okay. Yeah. So that helped. Tiger parents so love I that. I, I hear. My, I mean, my grandma no. keeps asking about my uh, my roommate that I've I've lived with her. I've known her since college, so uh, she and I have lived together for years. So it years. looks like a huge domestic partnership like, for like seven years or eight. Because like we all have that cousin who's definitely going yeah. down on her roommate. <laughs> so my grandma's always like, "How's your friend? Oh, and that's the, cool the, though. The one that you live with." So uh, your family, your family's <laughs> hip to the fact that you might be gay. 
and they're possible. cool about it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, how or long they, until or they're just ignoring it. I don't know. It's how long? Two. So I have a question. You're waiting for the other shoe to drop. How long do you wait for the other shoe to drop until you think to yourself, okay, there's not a trap door beneath this happiness. It's not going to fall out from under my feet at any moment's notice. Now I'm going to introduce them to the folks. Five more months? When they're engaged. Oh, no, yeah. Engagement? Probably. Wow. Yeah. Because okay. also at this point, I'm like, ugh, unless it's really the real thing, there's just no point in getting my parents excited about something. And I mean, yeah, but it know. might might be exciting for them. Maybe they'll be like, oh, sh- not fucking the roommate. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I just know like the type of parents like yeah. that you have. So mm-hmm. I, I I would do the same thing. Yeah, they just and I'd, I'd wait, or I'd probably just show up like six months pregnant and be like, I did it. It's very, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, there it's, we go. Well, yeah. it's hard. It's hard like growing up modern with very traditional roots. You know, it's it's hard to step away from that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, to their credit, they really left me alone about dating and getting married and stuff when I was in grad school. Mm-hmm. They waited a respectable amount of time mm-hmm. until I was in my thirties. Now. It's a Which different story. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm, you know, working and I have a career, they're a little bit more pushy about it. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know. Which you would do. think it would not be that way. Yeah. One you know, would hope. you one would, would think, hope. okay, you're an independent woman killing it. Yes. Just taking care of yourself. All right. We did it. Like, that's, that should be the American dream mm-hmm. to a point where it's like, wow, not only did my daughter, like, She's going to make enough money to take care of us without a man. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's so sad that it has to be a baby and a man to yeah. do it or a lesbian and a dream and an adoption <laughs> a agent. Or a, roo- a roommate <laughs> and an adoption. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So also, uh, what's our time like? Uh, okay. We're at like 43. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... You look beautiful, oh, and um, on my podcast, I always try, I skip it sometimes, to um, ask people um, about, like, first of all, what diet are you on? Do you have one now that you're on? No. Okay. <laughs> and and what about your workout routine? So, diet-wise, um, I'm just about moderation. Mm-hmm. I just... I try not to eat too much sugar, try not to eat too many carbs, try mm-hmm. not to eat too much fat. Um, and exercise-wise, also moderation. Okay. Um, you know, yoga, Pilates, like the usual stuff. But I, The I, us- usual L.A. stuff. The usual L.A. thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, hiking. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, Turner loves hiking. Her yeah. dog's name is Turner, yeah. not her boyfriend. <laughs> um, and... I like to really get exercise through like doing activities. Yeah. So I'd rather, I mean, I'd rather go hiking or go camping or something. And yeah, and ever since know. I moved back to LA, I really appreciate walking again. I'm like, it's so nice to be able to walk. Yes. You know, so. Yeah. Well, and and it really does make a big difference. Yeah. Being in Santa Monica, I get to walk to the beach. I get to walk <coughs> on the bluffs. Um, yeah, you're yeah. always walking. Yeah. So okay. nothing, nothing too specific. Okay. And. Um, because you do you how like what is your idea of like food and 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 how it like helps your brain like do you uh, do you take that into consideration because like i know like with mct oil and all that like all the fads that are like the the bulletproof diet and this or coffee in general um a lot of these people are trying to do things that are better for your brain um do you at all ever think about that when you're picking foods like for like eating for brain health or you're just like eh not Honestly, really. no. Okay. I mean, I think uh, I, diet's a really difficult thing to generalize because there's so many different factors that come into play. You know, your lifestyle and genetics and, um, you know, even just your diet, what it was, was as a kid. It's going to affect how you process food as an adult. Um, so, yeah, I think about it, but it's more okay. like eat vegetables, eat protein, you know, eat clean. Don't okay. eat too much processed food. Um, but there isn't any, like, type of supplement or anything that I take. Because it always, like, in- interests me when, um, like, I feel that, because uh, you knew me when I was a raw vegan. Um, and I, now knowing the science behind 
the fact that I was eating 300 grams of sugar a day is not ideal. Um, maybe not 300, but it was up there with my cheesecakes and stuff that I was making. Really good cheesecake. Um, I, I, I just find it interesting that, because like now I, I care so much, obviously the fact that I was even a raw vegan for a, a week means like I, I was on a quest to find something that wasn't a diet pill because I get, you know, Asian people also like to be skinny. Um, I know most people in the world, like who even care about Hollywood at all, like to be skinny. So in this industry, we like to be skinny. But so in, in middle America, there's a whole group of Asian people who don't really care about the industry who still want you to be extremely skinny in the world. I'm sure that's everybody. People want to be skinny. Nothing tastes better than skinny pills. And so I cared a lot about it, but I was on a quest to find a diet where like I didn't have to because I was taking diet pills in high school, you know, because I really, really wanted to be skinny. And then so I found the Raw Vegan book when I was in high school, and that's actually what got me, like, doing research about that diet, which I was like, oh, that, oh, <laughs> obviously, if you eat just fruits and vegetables, you're going to be skinny. <laughs> um, and then that's I, then my next boyfriend after that one is the one who introduced me to, like, CrossFit and the paleo diet. When, and then you even told me, like, yeah, like, meat. You have, like, meat's actually not, like, it's actually the reason why. Oh, Alex loves this. Alex loves telling me that I need to eat meat because he's taking a boomerang of us. <laughs> Jeez. Um, and the point in all of this little ramble was like, I, I always find it interesting when I had met like medical doctors that just didn't seem healthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking like, what what is up with that? Why? When are we going to get to a point where... Or is it always just going to be corrupt where it is always going to be like a pill, you know, because, you know, too, from experience that if you actually eat right, like you can not be obese. You ever yeah. think about that? Or like I know, again, case by case scenario, but there's a huge percentage of the population that's like sick and dying that could be healed through food. Um, yeah, I agree. And uh, why, why do you think that like s we're. Is it just like supply and demand? Like, what do you think is going on there with that? Like, well, I think you see a lot of medical professionals that are grossly unhealthy, um, and a lot of that has to do with more habits than just food. You know, stress levels, um, and obviously, it's a lot easier to uh, preach than practice, right? So, you might go to a cardiologist who's overweight who's telling you that you need to exercise and eat healthy, but um, See, for me, that and that, that frustrates me because I've always thought, well, it's a financial thing. It's a financial thing. Like, oh, trust me, like, if ugh, financially. And that's why with them at Freshman Week, it's like, I know you're making money, buddy. Like, I don't know how many, like, people you're taking care of. So I, I would imagine you have enough money to eat right. And, sure, like, then yeah, that's yeah. why I guess I would always be frustrated because it's like, And yeah. all, you know, all these studies that are done saying, oh, sugar's not that bad for you, or fat's not that bad for you, meat's not that bad for you, or the op saying the opposite. I mean, you have, to you have to always look at who's funding those studies. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like a big study came out saying that, like, oh, sugar's not as bad for you as they say it is. Well, that was funded by the sugar industry, mm -hmm. you know? And it becomes kind of this staple idea um, in, our, in our diet as a society. And we think that it's okay, but it's really not. Um, and again, I, I think genetics plays a huge role. I mean, it's 100%. really it's really hard to find like a one size fits all solution, especially when it comes to diet. Um, and for some people, it's a lot harder than for others. I mean, if you're if you grew up in a household where you were constantly fed processed foods and mm -hmm. high sugar diets and high fat diets, um, they've actually have shown that this alters circuitry in your brain. The mm -hmm. way that your brain responds to sugar and high fats. It's like a reward pathway. It mm. feels really good in your brain. You get a release of dopamine just like you would with cocaine. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's even harder for people who have grown up kind of in a malnourished environment because they, they, they have maybe stronger sugar cravings or their body just responds completely differently to um, really poor diets. So That really, that's so true because it, until this day, it, it freaks me out and it su surprises me because I had this coworker who um, what I hung out with him after work, and um, these ladies from 
Uh, Moon Juice came in and gave us all free juices. And I was so, obviously, I was so happy. I was all, thank you so much. So uh, I went over to his place and I pulled the juice out of my purse. And he goes, ugh. And I, 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 then it hit me. I was like, holy crap, there's still this huge part of the population that sees a salad and goes, ew. Oh, yeah. Right? And not, oh, this feels, they don't think, oh, this feels so delicious and good to eat and put in my body. And I'm so happy that I can eat this salad. They think, ugh. Or, or I've heard someone say, I don't remember the last time I ate a vegetable. Yeah. Right. And it's like that. And, I also have had another coworker who said he's like I'm only eating grass fed meat right now, which then now I have to look at that in a little bit different of a light because I'm like okay because I and it, guess what he looked, allow me to say amazing, you know I I know he was eating other things but he's like no like the the bulk of my diet is grass fed meat and I'm like well I'm glad you can afford that first of all yeah it's a um because and then once. Obviously, Alex and I have talked about this on the podcast before about how, like, when you beat your sugar cravings, like, it's actually so much easier to eat healthy when you've been able to rewire your body. Mm-hmm. And um, that, and then uh, my other friend that you know, who, um, Samantha, she, she did the same thing. Like, she actually told me. Shout out to Samantha because I felt like that's when I was really, really into my raw food stuff. Um, that I just felt like a medicine woman that she's like, Crystal, she goes, you saved my life because she had like this food baby in her stomach. And she had told me that like, she hadn't gone to the restroom in like five days and that because she was raised on like mac and cheese and chicken fingers basically and was able to eat whatever she wanted like she didn't have anybody saying like eat your vegetables or you can't go outside so and and yeah and you're absolutely right and so whenever she would see me drinking my juices which is funny because when I worked on this food truck um shout out to the boyfriend who funded my raw vegan diet (laughs) (laughs) um yeah I was working on a food truck (laughs) eating the raw vegan diet and and that was actually a funny experience too whenever like I was like serving fries to someone and this guy looked at me he goes you don't eat this food do you and I was like oh my god how can you tell and he's like it's your tiny and you like solely shopped at Erewhon right (laughs) yeah and I I, I shopped at Whole Foods too Mm. um but yeah oh that was a fun time uh, right. Okay. So uh, again, the point is just man habits. It's it's, it's so crazy how um, we get caught up in our own little worlds and we don't even realize. And um, yeah. And and I even I uh, do you remember that phase that I went through when I was like I really really wanted to try to get. Um, have you heard of the um, documentary? It's called. Um, Um, like fat, fat something. And basically it's about this guy who goes around and he eats at all the fast food restaurants and he gets lettuce wrapped and, or he's like, cause it was, it, it was the against supersize me. Okay. It was like fat head or something like that. And, um, I, I wanted to redo it because I feel like that, like sometimes I, I want to do my own version of that where it's like, no, guess what? Even though if the meat's not grass fed, sometimes like even if you just eliminate carbs and if it's fast food, it's actually not that bad for you because there still has to be some federal regulations in like w- what they're feeding us, you know, if you disagree with that. I mean, you would hope. Yeah. Well, but, because uh, like, I'm not saying go just get lettuce at McDonald's every day, but like even I think Carl's Jr. had like the, what was like the natural something or they get, had the impossible burger. Well, no, no, they had meat that was apparently like with no hormones or something like you could actually get like decent meat at Carl's Jr. And I know uh, coming from someone who's now eating the plant-based diet, there's no such thing as decent meat. Wrong. You also think that the government is doing something to regulate Have you ever had bacon? (laughs) All bacon's decent. I've never had bacon that wasn't at least decent, right? I love when she was on paleo. We ate so much bacon. Bacon and eggs. Yeah, literally, I think you came over one time, and I was just like, would you like me to fry us some bacon? Yes, yeah, so we, we would just, just eat, ate a like, a plate, plate of, of bacon. bacon. You got to bake it. You got to actually bake it. You put it on a baking sheet in the oven, 
with That's black pepper. Yep, some some pink salt, some black pepper. Get it going. The salt, the it crystallized salt, salt. The crystallized salt's gonna draw in that grease. It's gonna be a much better dining wow. experience. You just trust right, me I'll here. I'll try that. Trust me. And try it tonight. <laughs> So we did what I said we were going to do, where I did skip a bunch of bullet points, because like, I wanted to talk about uh, sex with you, and I wanted, so to be continued, and I also wanted to talk about, like, because you were there with me when I was in one of my like really like dark relationships, and like dating narcissists, so we have a lot more to discuss, so if you don't mind the drive and coming all the way back from the West Side, I'd love to have you back again very, very Let's soon. Let's do it. Part two. Um, so... And th- yeah, it went by so fast. It did. Right? Uh, can you believe it was already like an hour? Mm-hmm. God, okay. Guys, well, again, thank you so much for being here, Jen. I love you so much. I love you too. Alex, thank you. Thank you, you guys. Uh, the comedy pop up. Uh, follow us, like, subscribe, do all that amazing stuff. I'm Crystal Chats, and we'll see you next week.